and today's video is about dolly knitting. So a month or so ago I received a lovely dolly uh, care package from my friend Dottie and Dottie sent me some knitting needles and some yarn. And I had never done knitting before, but Dottie knitted me these incredible socks for my Mochi Ashi girls because it's so hard to find socks that fit them. So I'm looking at these socks and I'm like, these rule. They're so soft. They've got these little details on them, these little like lacy details and twists and they're so pretty. And then I, I saw what else Dottie was working on and she was making this striped Halloween witchy little dress. And she whipped it up in like a couple days. And so, of course, my that got my brain turning like, ooh, you know, I could make these custom doll clothes. Because you can sew with knitted fabric, but Dottie said she actually preferred dolly knitting to dolly sewing. So I started, I, I, my first thing I ever knitted was this acrylic blanket here that I've put on the doll couch. And, um, well, let me jump in and show you close up. So the first thing I ever knitted was this, basically just a big flat swatch. This is acrylic yarn that Dottie sent me and it's self-striping, so it made this really cool lavender, green, yellow, orange striped blanket. And so I did a bunch of garter stitch at the bottom, and then I learned stockinette, and then uh, basically I did, so, I did some ribbing in the middle to try it out. And then once I had done about half of this, I looked at what I'd previously done and I just reflected it on the other side. So it made it a symmetrical blanket. Now I will pause and say, this girl is new. She's a pink lily cat ombre. And uh, I had a little bit of a sad time because she did arrive um, in bad shape. Uh, the post office was not kind to her. Her faceplate is actually broken, but I still love her anyway. I love her pink um, resin tone. It actually looks like skin, like a skin tone to me, which I adore. I'm, I'm really glad that she looks like that anyway, but she's just so beautiful. I'm so in love with her, and uh, I'm so glad I was able to bond with her despite her tough beginnings. Anyway. Back to the knitting. Um, also, this is my other ombre. And both of their eyes are by the Secret Art Studio. And they, these eyes are incredible. So, anyway, more on that later. So here is my girl Lulu, and she's modeling some different types of knits. So on top here, she is wearing a turtleneck made by Safar BJD Tailoring. It's made for uh, MSD, so the sleeves are a little bit short, but honestly, I love this piece so much. I own um, clothes from Volks, clothes from other indie stores, and this is one of my favorite pieces in my collection. Um, it's so well made and the knit is the perfect scale for my girls. It is just this tiny little knit that makes them look so real and lifelike. So this is an example of a piece that's made with knit fabric and then it's sewn, it's machine sewn. This on the other hand is an example of something that was lovingly hand knit. So these are the socks that Dottie made for my Mochiashi girls. And Lulu isn't Mochiashi, but <laughs> she could still wear them. 
So look at this lace work. This lace work is insanely beautiful. The ribbing at the top, and it fits my Mochiashi girls perfectly. I just put it on Lulu because, um, look at how cute that looks with the boot just sticking out of the top. So precious. And the way you get knits to be in proportion to your dolls is you just use a finer weight of yarn. And this, this is just some really nice, super fine lace weight yarn. So you get these tiny little stitches that makes it perfectly in proportion for your girl. So the second thing I sewed was this. So this shirt was made out of this acrylic yarn with a little halo. This was actually some yarn that I bought to try and make wigs out of. However, it was so small that I couldn't really make yarn wigs out of it. But, um, so I made this for my partner's little dragon boy, Liu. And when I was, um, I had already cast on for, um, for another project for this little sneak preview. But um, I said, I wanna make something for your doll too. Um, what yarn do you want me to make it out of? And I just had this yarn in with my other yarns, which at the time consisted of this, this, and some other yellow ones. So I, and uh, this, this sock yarn. All of which Dottie had sent me, besides the yellow ones that I was trying to use for a wig. So I was secretly hoping Fall would choose this one. But as you can see, this is a larger weight. And I mean, this one is, is yellowy pink. It's like a really light coral pink. So of course, Fall chose the super tiny lace weight. So this is my second knitting project this uber tiny lace weight top and I'll insert some images here of Liu wearing it. Um, then in the back, um, the pattern I used was is from a book called Brilliant Basics. It's an ebook for so, uh, knitting for Lati Yellow, um, and Zuzu Delph is a little bit bigger than Lati Yellow, so I just increased it. Um, so that pattern, it's meant to be um, to not have a closure, so it's meant to just be knitted together in the back, but. Um, so that's why they did all these increases to make it kind of, you can tell it's slanted to the side. Because Fala is a little goth boy and loves zigzag uh, asymmetrical details. So this is a, a slanted zipper for a little punkish style. So I made it to be worn this way. Fala always loves to put it on Liu this way. So now we come to the third knit item that I ever knit, and that is this cardigan that Cherish is wearing. So this is again based off of the cardigan in the book Brilliant Basics, um, and I knit it with this beautiful autumnal colored wool, and in this project, this was the first project I ever knit with actual wool, and I just fell in love. I fell in love with the feeling of it. Um, and it was so fun to do. So here we have... So I basically knit this as... Um, five squares, five rectangles. So one rectangle for each of the front panels, one rectangle for each of the sleeves, and a big rectangle for the back. And I learned so much. 
Um, I was adjusting the pattern as I went, so I didn't realize that the yoke, this neck part up here, would also extend the sleeves. So the sleeves are co are too long. But I, I don't know, I kind of like the rolled up look. And then the buttonholes are actually part of the knit. Um, there's a technique called a yarn over that will make a little hole. So um, these buttonholes are made as part of that. And I, I could not be more pleased with how this came out. I love it, it's soft, it's the perfect colors for Cherish. And it's just so cozy and perfect for autumn and winter. I'm so happy with how that came out. And then, I began to fly too close to the sun. <laughs> so I will show you what I refer to as fail skirt. So after I had one doll blanket, one doll shirt, sorry. We don't need to play with the stegosaurus right now, <laughs> okay? <laughs> So after I had one doll blanket, one doll shirt, and one doll cardigan under my belt, I decided, let me jump into one of the hardest knitting techniques. Improvised <laughs> uh, color work. Uh, uh, improvised stranded color work. So this here is a Fair Isle bookmark. So the Fair Isle style of knitting is from Shetland. and you know, where the ponies are from. <laughs> oh, I'm such a knitting noob. I, uh, <laughs> I, I'm sure uh, I sound super basic to anybody who knows uh, anything about knitting. But anyway, Shetland is um, famous for its wool and its Fair Isle style knitting. So this is where you use two colors of yarn to make a design. So I tried to make a little heart bookmark, um, and these corners here are done in moss stitch, which I think is super fun and stimmy. I want to make a little moss stitch sweater for my plant boy, my little piggy boy Alistair. I improvised these little hearts based on my favorite heart Unicode characters, and uh, it's kind of asymmetrical, it's kind of messed up, but um, yeah, this is my first attempt at stranded color work. Uh, so I, I improvised the design. This is a wool and silk blend. That's the nice thing about knitting for dolls is you can use, you can buy mini skeins of really nice yarn and they're not too expensive. Whereas if you were trying to make a sweater out of this, you would be out a lot of money. <laughs> So once I had a Fair Isle bookmark under my belt, I figured, okay, I'm ready to jump in to patterning. I'm just ready to make my own knitwear. <laughs> oh, my own dolly knitwear uh, without a pattern and in d two colors right off the jump. So as you can see, my, my tension here is not, it's not great. Um, with double strand, with stranded color work, it's hard to get the tension just right. Um, so this was a skirt I just made up as I went along. It has a raindrop motif. Um, because uh, my name is Rainy and I like raindrops. They could all sweep little blood drops like a vampire moment. So I don't know if the problem is I blocked this by putting it on the doll um, rather than like spreading it out, but it looks kind of crumply. Um, but you know, I tried, I designed it myself. I. Uh, improvised it. I made up the the design and the pattern. I think what I'm most dissatisfied with is the decreases are so visible. So I'm going to try and figure out a way to make those decreases more invisible. I think I still have a lot to learn and I need to stick to patterns uh, for a bit before trying to jump in and design my own patterns. But, you know, it's wearable for now. Um, I found another nice thing about having a lot of dolls. Oh, there are so many nice things about having a lot of dolls. But I bought this um, sweatshirt for um, for Liu, but it's a Honey Delph size. And Honey Delph is bigger than Susie Delph, I didn't realize that. But it makes such a cute little uh, quarter length 
oversized sweater for ombre. So I just think that's so rad. Um, I also, I bought this collar for Safi, but I had bought a collar for Mireille before, like a little fashion lace collar, and it had stained Mireille's neck. So anyway, Ombre gets to keep this for now. <laughs> oh, that's what's nice about having both resin and vinyl. You know, you have the vinyl dolls that are super fun to pose and are, have super cute anime faces and, um, you know, just have so many clothes made for them. And then you have dolls that um, have a different look. Uh, this is a Lily Cat Ombre. So Lily Cat is an indie artist based in France with this really unique look. And you don't have to worry about stains. You can just pop whatever you want on them and they will never get stains. So it's nice about having both. Lots of nice things though. Also, um, I was so mad because this wig is so beautiful and so exactly my taste. But when it came in, uh, the wig cap was melted. I, she was sitting in German customs for several weeks, uh, wet. The package was wet. So when this wig cap came, I had to dry it out really well, put another coat of glue on it, and it still doesn't have its form like it did before. But uh, I taped it to her head <laughs> with double stick tape, and I think it looks nice. Um, I love this wig, I'm obsessed with it. I think I was able to save it a little bit. Um, maybe I'll get a silicone wig cap at some point. But I'm obsessed how her wing ears stick out of this hair. It's like a total, total Zelda look. I'm obsessed. Don't you just love her? Um, I think, I, I had this historical character in mind for her, but after seeing how amazing she looks in modern clothes, I think she'll be both the historical character I had in mind and also her modern day reincarnation. So, um, I don't know if y'all are interested in my character's stories, but I'll probably go into that some more another time. But the historical name that I have for her is Isabel, which is um, French, and uh, it's like a medieval French name, and her reincarnation's name is Liselotte, which is like a German name because she came from Germany. Um, so she's originally French, a French doll, but uh, her previous owner, who's just so kind and sweet, um, just a wonderful, uh, sweet person, um, is German, so she has a little bit of duality to her. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking after fail skirt, you learned your lesson and you are no longer going to just randomly do objects without a pattern. You're no longer going to just try to improvise, right? Wrong. <laughs> this is my new fail skirt, fail skirt version two. Um, so this is a fail in many different ways but hopefully it'll be a success in some ways too. So this is a skirt I want to put on my mini Dolphy Dreams, uh, my Mochiashi Girls, but if not, it'll probably fit MSD and Ombre if it doesn't fit them. Um, so this edge here, um, Fall was trying to be nice and be like, oh, the, the lace work looks really good. I'm like, this is not lace work. I'm actually gonna fold under this edge and it's going to turn it into a scalloped edge. And that'll give the skirt a little bit of extra volume too. So I'm doing it with the magic loop technique, which is how you can knit really tiny things in the round without having really tiny cables. And I find that fun. You know, you just have to knit uh, so you don't have to purl, so I like that. So on this one, I was really dissatisfied with the decreases on the other one. So um, I found the slip slip knit decrease to be a lot more invisible than knit two together. I also hate doing knit two together for some reason. I just don't like jamming the needles in there. So um, I just did a bunch of slip slip knits in random areas. So hopefully a slip slip knit is a left leaning decrease. So hopefully, once this is all done up, it'll have kind of a twisted look to it. So we'll see. We'll see if this is a fail skirt. Right now I'm knitting the ribbing on the top and uh, then we'll 
cast off and sew this under and block it and then probably next video I'll show you what it looks like. I completely forgot to mention another one of my knitting projects. So this is my Hermione Nendroid doll that I ordered about a year ago um, and who finally came in. Um, and I knit her this little pixie dress and this was how I learned how to do the scalloped edge. So this, the edge of her skirt um, has yarn overs and it's folded over. So this again was modified from uh, that Brilliant Basics Latte Yellow book. Um, I decreased the pattern by half because the yarn is so big and because Nendoroid dolls are smaller than Latte Yellows. Um, I was worried it was going to be too big, but I still think it looks cute even though it's quite oversized. Um, so here is her little, her little dress in kind of Gryffindory colors. And this shouldn't need to be said, said um, but trans women are women and I completely disagree with everything J.K. Rowling said about trans people. Uh, I support trans rights wholeheartedly and um, I myself am non-binary so if you don't support trans rights, then you can get off my channel. Okay. <laughs> oh, I, I just feel like I have to say that when uh, I show a Harry Potter character, but I'm taking Hermione back. She's mine now. She's my character now. And she definitely supports trans rights. So this isn't necessarily doll related, but I just thought I would show you the different yarns that I have um, and what I plan to do with them. So this is a wool, a lace weight wool. It's really soft. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that. This right here is a blend that includes cashmere. It's so pretty. It's um, baby alpaca, cashmere, and silk. I really want to find a pretty pattern for um, pajamas, like a tank top and pants or shorts and I want to make really nice cashmere light gray pajamas for Mihae. I think that would look so sweet on her. And the great thing is, you know, these ladies are one fourth. You know, if you do the math, um, Safi is 5'8". So uh, Muñeca's Poupé's dolls did a great video about how you can calculate how tall your dolls are in real life, which I just get a huge kick out of. Um, it's so fun. But you can also take a normal knitted pattern for a human, for a human who's 5'8", and size it down by four, just decrease it by four times, and then you could sew it for your dolls. I haven't tried that yet, but I think I'm going to with that. This right here is, um, I think it's another blend that has silk in it, uh, but it's this lovely var variegated, um, it's got like really light cyan and coral and pink in it, so I think I'm going to knit like a, like a summery dress, either for uh, Lila or for Lulu. Oh my gosh, so many of my <laughs> dolls are French and have L names. I have a problem. Um, okay, this is sock yarn that Dottie sent me, so I think I'm going to make my first ever pair of socks with those. Um, I have some more, uh, some new needles coming in, so I'm going to try and make my first ever pair of human socks with those. That's also sock yarn. Got to be some socks. I'm so excited about this because it's like wool and cashmere and it's super pretty. Um, that is the wool yarn that I've, I've already made a lot of stuff with it but I love the feel of it so I'm just gonna keep this and I'm sure I'll find another project to make with it because I love it. This right here is mohair. It has mohair in it and it's so freaking tiny. I do not even know what you can make out of this. Maybe I'll make like a tiny sweater for Alistair out of it. Maybe some undies? I don't know. Mohair undies? I don't know. I don't know. Tell me what you think I should make out of this. 
This is um, what I made fail skirt out of. This is the grayish color. And then um, I'm currently using the mulberry color. This is a darker gray. Um, but I love it. It's a, a silk and wool blend. It's so nice. And it's so fun to work with. And you know, even though fail skirt is a fail because my tension isn't very good, um, I use the dominant color technique with this where you always keep one thread in one place and the other thread in the other. But I might, I might try the Norwegian style where you don't keep a dominant color just to try, just to see. Um, cause my tension, my tension is so bad. The blocking didn't fix it. Okay. But we'll, we'll figure that out. Um, so this again, I'm just going to save this until I need some, something really tiny made. This is a slightly thicker wool yarn, merino wool yarn. Um, and this one, oh no, it's, it's a half... I think it's half alpaca, half Shetland wool. That's what this is. Half alpaca, half Shetland wool. It's a little thicker. Honestly, it's a little rougher. So I don't know what I'll make with that. Probably something doll. Something uh, doll related. Maybe I'll make like a little doll pillow with it. I think that would be cute. That weight. Um, this is baby alpaca. And I'm going to make my partner some cuffs out of this. So, ooh. Hi, Sumi. Sumi, wanna say hi to everyone? Wanna say hi? Wanna say hi? Starry's here as well. She always gets jealous when I talk to anything that's not her, including the cat and including the YouTube. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm going to make my partner I'm gonna make some arm warmers out of that lovely lavender. These, so it's all, I love knee high socks, thigh high socks, but it's always impossible for me to find ones that fit. I'm going to try and knit my own socks and I'm gonna do them toe up and then go up as far as I can. So if I can get some thigh highs out of this, I would love that, but knee highs would be cool too. And burgundy is one of my favorite colors. And then these over here, this yellow yarn is for BJD wigs. Um, it's acrylic, so it doesn't feel very good. So I wouldn't knit anything out of that. I might also try to use that for um, wigs, but this acrylic feels a little higher quality, so I, I would definitely knit something out of that too. I love how the blanket came out. And then this is... That first one I showed you, this is another cake of it, um, because the sky and I had made two cakes. Um, and that's the merino wool, but it's it's like soft and thin, so um, I'll have to figure out what I want to make with that. <laughs> So I also wanted to spotlight some awesome knitters in the doll community. Um, there is someone on Instagram named uh, Kota Koti Knits. Um, they super inspire me. Their knits are so neat. They look so good. They knit a lot for Dust of Dolls. Um, dolls. And uh, so cute. So, so, so cute. incredible little tiny sweaters and stuff.
I'm sure you will love their Instagram and um, and knitting specific Instagram as well. So another that I love is of course Sighthound Lady has been doing some amazing knits. Um, Sighthound Lady does the Fair Isle style for like cardigans and stuff and oh my goodness it's insanely good. Just like all these bright colors that you would never see in traditional Fair Isle. Um, perfectly fit to all of her really unique dolls. Um, I would definitely go check out her work. Um, she also inspired me to try to use, try out alpaca and to try stranded color work. She was my inspiration to try that. So I'm really grateful to her for that. And yeah, definitely go check out her knits if you're interested in dolly knits. Lastly, another uh, YouTuber I really enjoy, another Instagram I really enjoy is um, Joshy Bear Huggies. He makes really just like relaxing videos. I love his doll talk videos and I love his personality. He's so like sweet and charming and just fun and he knits. He's an amazing knitter. He has all these different dolls with unique body types and he just he just knits and sews up a storm so I really respect him and you should go check out his stuff too. I, from time to time he also sells his knitwear so yeah check it out. So as you can see here I'm doing a knit three pearl three ribbing for the top of my skirt and I hope this will suck in and give the skirt a really nice flare. I also forgot to mention that this hat was sent in the initial care package and Dottie made it for me and it fits so perfectly on my huge weird head. So anyway, <laughs> I, I knew I had to um, wear it for the video. So big thanks to Dottie AKA AABJD Works on Instagram, Sour Dots on Denim Angels, an amazing face up artist, and has some incredible dolls of her own. Big thanks to Dottie for my new hyperfixation. <laughs> and um, I'm just enjoying knitting so much, and I hope to get better. Uh, it's really nice to have a kind of zen meditative moment where I'm not looking at social media or I'm not like thinking too much just kind of, and I'm not thinking too little uh, it doesn't give me space for worry just turn on an audiobook or a podcast curl up and just do some knitting um, so if you're looking for a fun relaxing hobby that also gives you doll clothes um, definitely check out knitting um, there's so much fun stuff to learn out there, and I'll leave links to all the stuff that I mentioned uh, down below, and I'll see you again soon. Oh.